Buen día. That's, thank you. Oh, what an enthusiastic audience. Thank you. That's about the extent of my Brazilian, uh, my Brazilian Portuguese, apart from being able to order a few things in food and drink. Um, so I will present in English. I'm, I'm delighted to be here and uh, nice to see some familiar faces and some, uh, some new ones. Hope to uh, meet uh, many of you later on. But uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to uh, push straight on uh, with, my, with my presentation. My goal today is to show you some of the breadth of activity inside the Open Group. We're very well known for enterprise architecture, and many of you will be here with an interest in that today. But there's much, much more to the open group. So my goal is to try and uh, share that with you in the time that I have available. So the open group is an international consortium. We now have over 700 membership organizations in many countries around the world. We're very proud of our global uh, nature and the fact that we we really do have participation from just about everywhere apart from Antarctica. So if anyone knows anyone in Antarctica that wants to join, we'd love to get the last uh, continent um, on our map. Um, let's see. Everything we do at the Open Group uh, works through this. Our tagline is making standards work. What do we mean by that? We mean there's a lot of standards in the world. And some of them are useful, and some of them not so useful. Um, we believe in making them work. And, and the way we create them is we always start with a customer and vendor need. Um, it can be one or the other. The most effective uh, groups form where there is a customer need and a group of customers who really have a business problem to solve. And I'll talk about some examples of that um, shortly. Um, when, when there's an activity started, we do that through something called a forum or a work group. And I'll show you what they are shortly too. And we follow a tried and tested standards process. It's a process that will take all the ideas and inputs from the different participants in the activity and put it through, if you like, a, a sausage machine, and out the, out the other side will come a, a standard. It's a deterministic process. It will get to um, a conclusion. It won't go on and on for years, as has been the, the uh, fault of some of the standards activities in the world. Um, and we're, we're very proud that it, that it um, is, is tried and tested. It works. Um, sometimes it takes longer than other times, but we're learning after all this time, we're really learning some good ways to make sure that we accelerate the process. A key part of it down here is certification. Wherever possible, wherever it makes sense, we try and uh, create a certification program to underpin our standards. Um, and the reason we do that is to really give the, certificate, the uh, standard some teeth so that organizations or individuals can't just claim that they meet the standard. In the case of individuals, that will normally be a knowledge or experience-based certification. They can't just claim they meet the standard. They have to prove it through certification. Same with suppliers. They submit their products for certification, and that's the proof. It's black and white to us. You're either certified or you're not. And that is very useful in the marketplace to the customers who are trying to decide where they buy their, buy their products from, where they hire their people from. You know, is this, is this person certified? Is this product certified? Um, and the last point going around, market adoption. Um, is, is crucial because you can have the best standard in the world if nobody knows about it and nobody's using it, it's not going to have the effect that it should and it's not going to justify all the effort that went into it by the member organizations putting their time and money into it. So we work with the members to uh, get the standard out there, get the standard known and promote the value of standardization and the value of certification. 
And all the while, the, the middle circle is very important. All the while, we at the Open Group are collaborating with other standards organizations, um, some formal in international organizations like ISO and JTC1, IEC, and, uh, and also other standards, other industry standards organizations. So we, we definitely believe in working with other organizations not to reinvent the wheel, but to leverage the good work that's been done. And one of our most successful approaches is where we, where we adopt a standard of standards approach. So we bring together standards in a particular area so that they can work together, just filling in the gaps so that they work. So with this background, um, I'll say a bit more about, about what we actually do, but this, this underpins uh, everything we do. These are the forums currently of the Open Group, um, and I'm not going to go into detail about them because I would need most of the day, but I will just touch briefly on what they are so that you have an understanding. The, the first two going from left to right on the, on the well, going one direction or another, I can't, remember, can't work it out from here. Um, starting with Archimate Forum and Architecture Forum. Um, the Architecture Forum is the group that created and continues to evolve the TOGAF standard, for which we're very well known. Um, it's a very widely adopted standard. And to my certification point, we now have over 90,000 individuals in the world certified um, to this uh, latest version or oh, the TOGAF 9 um, version. Um, we continue to evolve that. Um, you'll hear about that during the rest of the day. You'll hear other examples of how that is being used by companies. Um, but for now, that's all I'll say about TOGAF. Archimate is the forum that created and evolves the Archimate modeling language. And that is a, a language for modeling in enterprise architecture. It works very well with TOGAF, a lot of the same terminology, and, and uh, you don't need to use TOGAF to use Archimate, but they work very well together. Um, Open Process Automation Forum, I'm going to say something specifically about uh, in a few minutes, so I'll pass over that for now. Um, but suffice to say, it's been a, um, a, a very active forum. Um, in a relatively short time and is doing some great work. And in fact, you can see a demonstration of some of that work outside from, uh, from SMA, one of our members there. Um, IT for IT forum. IT for IT is a reference architecture for running the business of IT. Looking at what it takes to run an IT organization from end to end um, on a um, basically a value stream and value chain viewpoint, um, making it run much more like a business than in the past. Um, and that activity is um, is ongoing. In fact, we're, we're they're working hard on uh, the next version of IT for IT, which will uh, which will see make a significant um, significant contribution to the service management world. After IT for IT, we have Real-Time and Embedded Systems Forum. That has done a lot of things over a number of years, um, but basically anything where uh, real-time, um, safety critical, um, uh, where, where that is important, military purposes are a lot of what they've spent their time on. Um, and uh, they continue to, uh, to work through. Um, dependability through assuredness is their current tagline they are working through. Um, so uh, that, that goes on. Open Trusted Technology Forum is interesting. This one is about reducing and ideally eliminating the threat of tainted and counterfeit product in the supply chain. So this was actually started as a government uh, industry collaboration and through that um, collaboration, we've created a standard called the Open Trusted Technology Standard um, and a certification program that allows organizations to uh, certify that they know where every, uh, every aspect of, uh, of a particular product line that they choose to certify, where they come from, and that they, they uh, certify that they are not tainted or counterfeit in any way. Um, 
this standard and, uh, and, and some of the uh, surrounding documentation has been adopted by ISO as a formal international standard. And we're now seeing more and more organizations certify to this because it helps their chances of procurement um, if they step up to this, to this standard. Security Forum um, is, uh, has, again, worked on various things over, it, over the course of time. Its current focus is mostly on risk, um, uh, risk management uh, in particular, um, and also the security aspects of architecture. Security architecture is key to many of the things that go on, and we find our security forum acting as kind of internal advisors to some of our other forums on security matters, because of course security pervades everything that we do uh, and needs to. Open Platform 3.0 is the, the mix of these, of these things, cloud, IoT, big data, um, getting all these things together as they, as they hit us and affect our worlds and working out what does the third platform, what does the new platform going forward mean that involves all of these things. Um, that's a big, big scope for that forum. And uh, we've had some standards uh, released there in the IoT space, uh, which are uh, quite significant, um, working uh, with the European Union um, in, in some of those areas. So that's what they do. Um, platform Forum, Unix, bringing together the different flavors of the Unix certification system and transforming what Unix means from being something related to a particular line of code or particular um, uh, base of code to a standard, the single uh, Unix specification. Um, people think that Unix is old hat, it's old news, it's still a huge business absolutely huge market and um, one of the things that I oh I can do because I, I kept it one of the things that I uh, that I do when I talk about it is anyone who has an iPhone um, that's running a certified Unix system so Apple is a is a customer of our certification program here um, for their uh, OS 10 and every every version of that since um, an open subsurface data universe forum nice mouthful I'll explain what that is separately in a moment. So uh, we also have a couple of verticals in healthcare. Uh, the Healthcare Forum is currently working on a reference architecture for a health enterprise called OHERA. Um, if there's an industry that is crying out for some kind of standardization and efficiency, it's the healthcare industry. We're also doing some in interesting work. Uh, the US government has um, uh, handed over something called the FIM, the Federal Health Information Model, to the Open Group for us to evolve in the future and to make it more globally applicable. So that's what they're up to. And we have the Exploration Mining Metals and Minerals Group, which is not doing a whole lot right now, but has created some very good materials and architectural artifacts for, for um, those industries. And Face and Sosa, I'll talk about one of those. My colleague Jim will talk about the other. Um, but I'll explain what that is shortly. Because what I want to show you now is standards that we're producing are fundamentally changing the ways that product is procured and supplied in various industries. And I'm going to start with the example of the Face Consortium. And what this is about is federal avionics in the United States. And I realize that probably none of you are directly involved in federal avionics in the United States. But the underlying message here is, is important, and you'll see how this flows through to other industries. So I, I want to set the scene for this. Um, this is a group that involves the US Army, Air Force, Navy, and over a thousand individual participants and every organization pretty much who is anyone in the supplier side of that world. So think Boeing, um, Rockwell Collins, Lockheed Martin, all of these organizations, they're all, they're all participating in this. And they're doing it because the US government customer, let me go back here, the US government customer basically decided enough is enough. We can't afford to continue to procure aircraft the way we've always done, which is 
gazillions of dollars thrown at one main one main contractor with subcontractors of course but one main contractor and then with service rights and obligations for decades afterwards no reuse in anything they do um, so every every new aircraft gets designed from scratch and um, they just can't afford to do it they uh, they need to uh, do what the rest of the world is doing and and uh, look at open standards and and open architectures so the idea here is is interoperability so what's standard in all these devices is the interface what's above it can look different and can f perform different functions but it's the interface that needs to interoperate and that's key not just for light bulbs and that's just a picture of pretty light bulbs uh, nothing, no other reason for it being there. What's key is, um, right now, if you take any, any, particular, um, uh, op, uh, any particular functionality in this list, um, transport services, as I say, everything is designed for a specific aircraft. So uh, any, any, part of, uh, any, any part of the functionality for one aircraft is completely different to the other, so they they don't work together. They they absolutely do not interoperate, and uh, there's retrofitting and and changing to the to the specs allows you to keep up with, to a certain extent, with things like security threats. But there's no interoperability there, and it needs to change. So, I described single vendors, limited portability. This is essentially the. Um, the, the problem that they're addressing here in, in Face Consortium. Um, and the approach they've decided on is open standards based, open architecture, and increasingly something they call modular systems. So um, this is the approach to get affordable software systems, portable capabilities, all of the, all of the things I mentioned. And innovation is key. Um, Obviously, there's a, the vendors will, will say, well, what's in it for me um, if, if we're, we're having to go down a different path? Um, the fact is that, that this approach encourages innovation and it actually encourages, uh, gives increased opportunities for smaller organizations to get involved in, in the supply. So this is essentially what we're talking about is a move from proprietary systems to open systems. And some examples along the way of, of how, for example, the way it's done in federal avionics right now, everything is proprietary. If you look at the iPhone, you've got open apps, but otherwise it's proprietary to Apple. Android, you've got the open apps and open hardware, but, but proprietary in the middle. Where these guys are going is everything essentially needs to be um, plug and play, reuse across different aircraft. So it's a lot of detail about federal avionics, I realize, but look at these benefits because you'll see these come up in things that may be more directly relevant to you. Uh, increased competition, reduce, reduce software development times, reuse, um, integration, and for the industry participants, um, basically increased competition, um, lower the cost of doing business. And I'll say a bit about that in the context of the Open Process Automation Forum next. But these are the, the, the benefits and the, and the reasons, and I'm not going to do the procurement slide because my colleague Jim is going to talk about what this means in a business sense um, from a government point of view when he talks. Um, but the, the message is that the face standard is being used in procurements, which means there's big money attached to it and a big incentive for organizations to get involved. So, sir, I was going to talk about, but... Jim is going to do that when he talks about this is another government uh, related activity which actually spun out of face. So Jim's going to cover that. So I want to get to this one because I know there are people in the room with an interest in it. Um, similar situation. I'll let you look at the slides. Uh, those of you who, who uh, 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 can, can read the slides in English. But I want to set, to set the context a little for how this came about. Uh, and why I spent time talking about face. Um, ExxonMobil in the oil and gas industry 
saw what was going on in Federal Avionics. Don't ask me how, but they, they happened to be at an event where they heard about it. And they said, we have a lot of the same challenges in our industry. We have uh, the, the product systems are generally supplied in the same way. Big vendors um, supplying the whole system and then providing the support for that whole system for 25, 30 years in some cases. And from a customer point of view, they've got an end of life situation with some of those systems in the next five to 10 years, and they don't want the next generation of systems to be done the same way. They want for the oil and gas industry what FACE was doing for the federal avionics industry. And uh, they, they came to us and said, can you, can you help us do this? And uh, we, first of all, we said, well, let's see if this is more than just ExxonMobil. This should be something that other oil and gas companies um, relate to. And the answer very quickly was yes, um, it is an industry thing. But then w what happened next was interesting. We, we also realized this isn't just oil and gas, this is any organization that where process automation systems play a significant role. So we very quickly identified a lot more um, industries. Uh, I'll show you some of the use cases in a moment, but you know, I'm, I'm thinking about petro, uh, well, petrochemical, pharmaceutical, pulp and paper, food and beverage, utilities. These are some of the organizations who um, have the same issue. So, um, what they decided to do was pretty much the same thing as, as FACE, but in, in their world. Um, open, interoperable, secure by design, process automation systems, architecture is, uh, is what they're working to. And they, the forum has published the uh, first version of its standard. And um, out there in the hallway, you will see a, um, an exhibition from, uh, exhibit from SMA where uh, they were part of uh, an interoperability test to show that that systems from different organizations can work together. And you'll hear more about, uh, more, more technical than I will be, um, about this forum later in the, in the day today. But this, is, this is basically what they're doing. And it's, it's fascinating stuff. These are some of the use cases I mentioned. I think I mentioned all these chemicals, mining and minerals. The last one I want to talk about is a newer forum, um, and it's, uh, called the Open Subsurface Data Universe Forum. And this is about um, the subsurface part of the oil and gas industry, um, where the, the scenario there is, ah, thank you, not yet. The scenario there is that they, um, all of the oil and gas operators spend um, a very large amount of money on exploration and getting data uh, about exploration, where new sources of oil and gas may be, whether it be on land or, or underwater. Um, the reality is that they currently can't use most of that data. They can't analyze it. Um, they can't make use of it um, because the data that they get is completely dependent on the source of that data. Um, so they, their, their goal is to create a cloud-based platform where all this data can be, uh, uh, can basically be analyzed, it can be, uh, be on the platform, be analyzed across the piece, and that will leverage the rest of the data. It will, it will, it, and the numbers we're talking are roughly they get to use right now about 10% of the data that they pay for. And um, Pedro's from Petrobras is nodding. Um, thank you. Um, about 10%. So leveraging the other 90% has to make sense. Um, and this is what they're uh, this is this is what they're working on. So uh, they're adopting a, a, a similar approach. We're getting the customer organisations together. So we started with with the uh, oil and gas operators, and then brought in some of the supplier organizations, both the typical suppliers to oil and gas, but also cloud providers. So in this forum, we, we have um, 
uh, AWS has joined, Amazon Web Services, and Google and Microsoft Azure, they are all participating in this because they are key to um, providing the uh, providing the platform that these uh, systems will operate on. So this forum is, is absolutely exploding. It's gone from being launched um, last year to, to this point in time. I think we've got about 85 organizations involved. Um, and uh, they're doing great, great stuff and moving at a very, very fast pace. So it doesn't look like I'll get you get to show you the slides um, for that, but they, we, we will be distributing the slides or making them available to you so you will see, see what they're doing. But this is, um, this is a really uh, dynamic and fast-moving um, group that we've got within the open group. And uh, it, it's interesting if, uh, if any of you are vaguely connected to that world or in currently involved in the open process automation, then uh, you might want to be interested in what's going on here because we're going to fundamentally change uh, the way that systems are procured in, in this industry too. And a key part of this is it will open up, it will, it will allow the oil and gas companies to focus on, on their main business and then generating value. and and uh, rather than worrying so much about the systems interoperating and getting the data there. Um, and it will also allow uh, a new set of services to be provided by suppliers. Um, Subscription-based services or very specific things that utilize the new platform, but without, um, without everything being separate, separated and in, uh, thank you, there we go, and in um, silos. So. Uh, I've said most of this, but this is this is the point about data. I will just say this, and then uh, and then I'll um, pack up um, and uh, let Jim speak. So, data is linked to the applications. I said that it's in silos. You can't get this end-to-end -end piece. That there's uh, no no metadata that's stored with the data, so you can't get this uh, view across the piece. With the result that only about 10% of the data is used effectively. So. What we're trying to do is separate the data from the applications, as I say, create a platform where the data can be analyzed and used. Um, that's the short version. Um, reference architecture, you'll see some of the names involved here. Um, this is what they're working on and very, very quickly uh, working on it. There's also a huge, a little new for the, not, not unique, but on this scale, it's new for the open group. A huge part of this is an open source project to, at the same time as creating the standard, actually create the code that implements the standard so that the customers actually have something to pick up and, 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 um, and use. Uh, just a few, let's see the business impact that I talked about, this is value. These are the uh, operator companies that are involved in this. And this is a year old um, and uh, great, great progress and a lot of buzz around this in the, in the industry. And uh, these are some of the supplier organizations involved. Um, so uh, if it's of any interest to your company, please, uh, please talk to us, talk to Roberto. Um, and uh, I was going to talk about commercial aviation, but given the time, uh, I won't, except guess what I'm going to say? Um, the same kind of activity is going on in the commercial aviation world. So we're trying to, we're, we're, we're getting various uh, airlines, airports, um, suppliers to the aviation industry together to look at more efficient ways of doing things in that world too. Uh, this is a very new group, um, just getting going. Um, so we don't have published standards yet, but we do have a what we call a snapshot, which is or a preliminary standard, sorry, which is a, an initial version of a standard in this world. And I'll say it's not just commercial organisations because my colleague Jim Hightower is going to talk about the use of some of our standards and the impact that they're having in the public sector. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, given the time, please grab me. I'll be around all day. Um, and in the meantime, thank you for your attention.